Hey church, how's it going? If you give me just a second, I'm trying to pull up the uh, the live stream right now on my other phone or on my phone. Um, that way I can see your guys' messages. But before we get started, um, yesterday on the on the um, live stream that I did, there we go. I um, asked you guys at the very end if you guys need prayer to um, to put them in the chat, right? And when you do this, this will be a cool prayer for us that, that we can all do together uh, as, a, as a group. And um, I just want to open up that opportunity to you guys to do... Hold up. Am I like way off centered? I am. All right, give me a second to fix that real quick. Uh, sorry, trying to do this by myself. My wife was here helping me a moment ago. Let's see. I think that that should be better. It takes a second to update. Nope, wrong way. All right, give me a second. All right, I think that hopefully that'll fix it. If not, then I'm just gonna move. Um, but again, if uh, if you would like some prayer about anything, then just let us know in the comment section, and we're at the end of this. We're gonna pray for everyone all together. Okay. Um, so today's Bible study is going to be about the lost child and our calling to find them. All right. So if you guys watched uh, last week, then you probably have a decent understanding about what we're going to talk about today. Because yesterday I, I led on for today's message. So um, if you watched yesterday's uh, little minute service or minute sermon, whatever, I can't remember what I called it. Um, you might have a little bit of an understanding about what we're going to talk about today. Um, but uh, before we get started, let's go ahead and open up in prayer, right? Like every time. Okay. Lord God, I thank you for everything that you have done in our lives, Lord. I pray, Father God, that you bless us, Father. I pray that you help us to open our hearts, our minds, our ears to what it is that you are going to say today, Father God, tonight. I pray, Lord God, that you open us up in order to, to receive it, Father, to receive your message. I pray, Lord God, that you would be with us, that you would help us, Lord God, and that you would just, just let us take this message to heart, Father God. Um, I pray for everyone that's watching, whether they're watching live or whether they're watching later on, Father. I pray that you would touch their lives. I pray that you would speak to them just like you speak to me, just like you speak to all of us, Father. I thank you and I praise you, Lord. Amen. All right, so the the wind blew my page. So the first bit that we're gonna uh, go over um, is gonna be the the lost child, right? So um, if you have your Bible with with you, then absolutely perfect. Uh, go to the verse. Um, where is it? Where is it? Uh, go to Luke 15 chap uh, Luke 15 verse 11 okay I don't know I'm so flustered today for some reason but Luke 15 verse 11 now yesterday we went over um, verses uh, starting from verse 4 talking about the 99 now I'm gonna talk about if you guys already know probably most of you do but I'm gonna be talking about the prodigal son right um, so I want to go over this scripture with you guys, but I want to break it down and then I want to tie it into something else at the at the end for for everyone. OK, um, but and before we start reading, reading the scripture real quick, if this message uh, is if this message is for you, you feel like it touches you, then, then let us know in the comments. Let us know that we're that we're hitting that we're hitting that bar. Um, if if you feel like this message isn't specifically for you then share it to someone you think it is right so the first part of this is going to be for someone that maybe isn't too strong in the faith or maybe doesn't even know the faith and the second part is going to be for the people that are in the faith already but if you feel like um like you know someone that can be touched by this message make sure that you share it with them so that way uh we spread the gospel right and again that i tie that in later on so, um, we're going to start at verse 11, okay? It says, uh, Jesus continued, There was a man who had two sons. 
The younger man, uh, the younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of, of the estate. So he did. And he, he divided his property and he gave, it, uh, gave the younger son uh, his share of, of his inheritance. Not long after that, the younger son uh, got everything together he, uh, that he had and set off for a far off distant country. And uh, when he was there, he squandered his wealth. Um, after he had spent everything, there was a, a severe famine in the, in the entire country that he, had, uh, that he had been in. So he went and he hired himself out uh, to a citizen of, of that country who sent him to the fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one would give him anything. And then I'm going to read this next part. I'm going to explain some stuff. So it says next, when he, came to, uh, when he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food, uh, and have food to spare at that? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and I have sinned against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So I'm going to pause right there, right? So, I'm going to break this down. So basically, there was a man that had a lot of wealth, right? He probably had a lot of, a lot of land, probably had a lot of, you know, livestock and things like that. And um, basically, his son, um, sorry, I hear my neighbors on there. But basically, when his youngest son comes up to him and says, Dad, like, I don't want to wait for you to die to get my portion. Like, I... I want my inheritance now. Right? It, think about that for a second, though. Right? Think about being the, the head of the house and your youngest child comes up to you and they're like 18 years old. They come up to you and they're like, hey, like, you're probably not going to die for a while. Do you think I can get like all your stuff, half your stuff? Like, you know, you can keep my... my sisters or brothers stuff but like give me my stuff now it very interesting right um very very interesting but that's what he does he goes to his dad and he says hey i want my inheritance now like i want to go and do stuff so his dad says it he i mean imagine the love that his dad had for him um and again this is a parable you know so it's not like a true story that jesus is telling it's telling a story but in that story, think about the, the love that Jesus is talking about um, between that father and, and son to do that. But the, that's what the son does. He, he, he gets it, and basically he sells everything, and he takes off. He dips out, and, you know, he goes off to some far country. So, I mean, think about it. It's like if your kid did that and then, like, like went to Brazil or, or Sweden or something, you know, just somewhere crazy far and you don't even get to talk to him anymore or anything like that so that's what the son did but instead of some doing something good with the money like maybe investing it or or um growing it or just doing anything honorable with it he didn't he squandered it right he says that he squandered what does that mean it means that he wasted the gift or the inheritance that his father gave him right he wasted it on probably booze. It definitely says later that he uh, wasted it on, on prostitutes. And uh, he just wanted to live a big life, right? L live large, I guess you can say. Right? And what I love about this is that then he finds that it's empty. That life that he was leading, it doesn't lead to anything, to anything good at least. And, um, and so he finds himself in the lowest of the lows where then he's now working like we're, he gets so low that he has to finally instead of living large and being big he has to go and get a job right like imagine that like he has to go get a job if you're watching this and you're under 18 or you don't have a job yet believe me life is going to hit you like a ton of bricks and one of these days you're going to have to go get a job and actually work for some money it's it's painful but um but yeah so he goes out and he has to get a job but 
it's not like a normal job like we have now, right? Like back then, they didn't have minimum wage. They didn't have workers comp or or workers rights or anything like that. I have a lot of friends that are on the left that would probably die from the thought of what workers had to go through back then. And um, yeah, so he went in not 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 just as like a as a worker, but he went in as as a servant, right? Like. Uh, he, almost like a slave really and he went out and he had to feed the pigs and he got so hungry that he he was starving he wanted to eat what the pigs were eating now I know that for a lot of people that have heard this before and if you haven't that's even better than I get to bring something new to you but that's pretty low right like I've, I've never been to a pig farm before I was born and raised in in sunny southern california and then lived a little bit in hawaii and stuff like i've never been to a pig farm right but my only experience of knowing anything about what a pig farm would be would one from my dad um, because he did he he worked on a dairy actually but um uh growing up there used to be a show i don't i don't think they show anymore but it was called dirty jobs with mike rowe who i i loved that show that show was so awesome um, but one of the things he did was he went to a, a pig farm out that, that was like just outside of Las Vegas, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but it, what I do remember is what they fed them was basically all the discarded food and trash that people left at like their table at a restaurant. And like this guy would go out and he would pick all this stuff up or it'd be delivered to him and he would grind it all up and then it would become like this big nasty slop right and like it would be like like ribs and then it, it would have steak and nice stuff like that but then it would have like ketchup and mayonnaise mixed in there and it would have like spaghetti and a bunch of things that taste good by themselves yeah but mixed together probably pretty disgusting <laughs> but uh so he you know it had all that stuff in there and then that's the slop basically like he would dip it in and just slop it in this bucket that's what the pigs would eat right and of course the pigs would get in there and and you know other things would end up inside their food and they would eat it and that that's on today's standard right like that would be pretty disgusting to eat but it would you maybe not die from eating it today right Back then, it was a totally different story, right? Like, um, I, I love history. Um, I love watching documentaries about history and stuff like that, and I, I just think it's awesome. But it wasn't that long ago, even in medieval times, and especially in the Roman times, but where the pigs would eat, especially in the city, um, it would be like a, I'm trying to explain this nicely. Um, it, like the so toilet seats <laughs> they would it would be like a bench and there'd be a hole and then that would jump drop into a a, 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 a a like an underground room so not exactly like an outhouse because what lived in the underground room was the pigs so you would do your business and then the pig would take care of your business so it was kind of like you know modern sewage but with pigs so <laughs> that was in the roman times right and roman times was about the time that jesus was you know that, that's that time frame that jesus was on earth and telling this parable so who knows what jesus had in his in his mind when he was saying about like what kind of food the pigs were eating but i can only imagine it was not good on top of that he's talking about someone that's jewish and jewish people aren't allowed to be around swine they're not supposed to eat uh pigs or really even be around them because they're uh, considered unclean and dirty and so saying that this kid is went from being like some you know a well off from a well-off family to now being basically a slave and feeding the pigs something that's unclean that's rock bottom that's what Jesus is talking about, is that this kid hit rock bottom completely. And he was starving. And so this kid, he, he sat back and he's like, wait a minute, like my, 
my dad's servants. They have food left over. And I'm over here starving to death like I'm going to die. And um, he decided, you know what? I'm going to go back to my dad. But I, I can't just go back to my dad as a son anymore. Like, I, I've wasted that. Right? Like, I, I, I lost his, I had to have lost his trust. I had to have just gone way too far. I mean, think about how much that that would hurt, excuse me, how much that would hurt his father um, about what he did with his inheritance and where he became. Um, he said, I can't do that. Like, I'm going to have to go to my father and just tell him, like, I'm not going to come to you as a son. I'm going to come to you as a servant. Treat me as your servant. I don't deserve it. And I, I can understand kind of where this guy is coming from with this. When Jesus is telling this story, I can relate to that. When I was in uh, boot camp for the Marine Corps, I remember I wanted to quit so bad. Like, I really, really wanted to quit. Um, but I just remember thinking, like, if I, I can't go back to my dad I can't go back to my grandfather my grandfather was a marine many years ago so I I was thinking I, I can't go back to him if I quit right giving it everything you have and then failing because of things that are outside of your circum outside of your control for the most part like you just like if I went and I just didn't have what it took then that's one thing but to go and to have what it takes but to quit that's a completely different story so that was my mind frame at that and I can relate to him so and again I, I want to mention that there's a difference for sure between between not being able to and quitting right and that's kind of what what this goes to right like this kid could have taken his inheritance early and then grew right made something that his dad could have been proud of but he didn't. He took it and he wasted it. He quit on himself. He wasted it. Um, and so now he's saying, like, I, I can't go back to my dad as a son. Like, I have to go back to my dad as a servant. Like, there's just no way that I can... I'm trying to pull up your guys' comments. He said, I can't go back to him as a, as a son. I got to go back to him as a servant. I don't deserve... Um, I don't deserve being called a son. But he, he goes to his father. He goes to his father and says, uh, where I leave off on? So this is the this is where I, it touches me right here. I mean, really, it touches me. It says, so he got up and went to his father. And listen to this. This is really, really important. I'm going to bring it up. It says, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. And he ran to his son and threw his arms around him and kissed him. I'm going to continue, but I want to stop right there for a second. There are so many things about that that is just amazing. I want to remind you, this is a parable that Jesus is talking about. A parable is basically a story that Jesus made up to try to teach or convey a message to the people in a way that they would understand and this is amazing what what lies behind those words that is written right there in red it says but while he was still a long way off the father saw him and doesn't say that the father sat back and just like i knew that you would do it i knew that you would come back that you would fail no he doesn't do that what the father does is he sees him and he runs to him and he meets him where he was on that path. He hugs him, he embraces him, and he gives him a kiss. I want to equate this to your life right now. Because when we move away from God, we're taking our inheritance that he has given us. That inheritance is your life. Your life, your future, that is your inheritance. And you take it and you go into the world. All you're going to find is death and destruction. Because that's all the world leads to. Because the world is sin. 
price of sin is death. But you can talk to countless people that have went, that have known Christ, went into the world, and found nothing good. Found nothing good. Life is in the blood. Life is in Christ. And that's what happened. What Jesus is saying is that when they go into the world, they find this. They find, you find, that there is nothing good out there for you. And if and when you decide to come back to the Father, you decide that, you know what, I can't go back to God as a child. I'm, I got to go back as a servant or something. I'm nothing. This is the beautiful part. Is that God doesn't wait for you to come to him. God is running to you. God runs to you. Think about that. The creator of the heavens and earth. When you look up at night into the sky and you see every single star. When you see a picture, excuse me, of a galaxy. And you see the beauty and the distance, the grandness of it all. The creator, the painter of all of that is running after you, you personally. That is the amazing part. And when he gets to you, he, he embraces you. He doesn't tell you, I told you so. He doesn't say, get on your knees. He doesn't tell you to work, any of that stuff. He says, I love you. And he hugs you and he kisses you. That is the beautiful part about our God. He's a merciful and loving God. That is what he is, is love. And you want to know what a very important part, the, the, this amazing part right here, is that, uh, you know, th th let me read this. Let me read a little bit more and I'll tell you this, this, this little thing. It says, the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and I have sinned against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, he didn't even talk to him yet, he said, he said to his servants, he says, quick, bring me the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate for this son of mine, not servant. He says, this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and now he is found. So they began to celebrate. When I was preparing for this, and I was I was reading this, and this is kind of what I do when when I have, when I have something ready is I'll go over it a few times, so I'm looking more at you and not at my notes. I have very little notes. I have like four things written down, little pin, pick spots. But the thing is, is that what I felt God saying is something I haven't really heard before. I kind of knew it, but I haven't really heard before. It was something new, and and I, I even I wrote it down in my Bible. He says, you are a child of God. You are called to be a child of God, not a servant of God. And it's, it, like, it, it sounds weird, I understand, but think about it. Like, we don't have, as Christians, we don't have, like, um, shrines built in our house or in our businesses that we go to and we get on our knees and we're not even allowed to look at it and we, you know, pray to the shrine. No. At our house, we, we sit at the dinner table and we pray or on the couch and pray or on bed and pray or when I'm driving to work and pray. I mean, obviously, when I drive to work, I, I, I don't even close my eyes. I mean, I'd rather not die while driving on the 15. But we can be a little more relaxed with our God. And the reason for that is because he didn't call you to be a servant. He called you to be a child of God. A child. Now that's not to say that a child doesn't have work to do around the house. But the child holds a special spot within the father's heart. Within the father's household. Alright, let's say, let's say that, uh, you know, there's a dinner. And... The master that I, I, I say master, the head of the house, they, they invite a guest over, right? And let's say that you have some money and you have a servant, right? Just, you know, you just have a little bit of extra cash laying around, right? Now, you have the head of the house, you have the child, you have the servant, and you have the guest. 
Well, the head of the house obviously has a spot on the table, right, for dinner. The guest has a spot on the table, and the child has a guest in the, a spot uh, on the table. The servant does not. The servant lives at the house. He, he sees the master every day, probably friends with the master after a while. But during the dinner, the, the, the servant doesn't get to enjoy the, the dinner. He doesn't get to enjoy the master or, or the presence of the guest. The servant is working. The servant goes in, prepares the food, brings it out, and makes sure that the dinner goes good and that everyone's comfortable. The guest. The guest has a spot at the table. Maybe be, depending on how your family's uh, table etiquette is, I don't know. Um, but the guest might get fed first. The guest gets to listen into all the conversations and is a part of all the conversations. The guest gets the best of what there is and all that, but at the end of the day, the at the end of the night, the, the guest leaves. The guest doesn't have a bed in the house. The guest doesn't have a permanent spot with the master. But the child, the child has a spot at the table. The child gets the best that there is. The child is taken care of, and the child has a house or has a room in the house the child goes to sleep in the master's house every day and the child has a very special spot in the master's heart that's important that's really important to oh, I gotta fly around here. that's really important for us to understand for you to understand you were not called to be a servant you were not called to be a guest you are called to be a child of God. That is so important. And if and when you decide to turn back to God, whether you've never known Him, or whether you did and you turned away, for anyone, God is going to meet you where you are on your path. And He's going to run for you. And he's going to guide you back to the house because you were and you always will be a child of the living God. He's going to open his arms with love and peace. And that's where it ties in from yesterday when, where is it? When it talks about the 99, right? So it says later on that there was, that they threw a great party. They threw a feast. Everyone was happy. He says the same thing in verse 7 uh, of that same chapter. He says, I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who never need to repent. It's amazing. And I wasn't going to talk about it, but maybe I will. But later on, it talks about the other son saying, hey, what about me? Like, I never left, Dad. I didn't go squander all your stuff. And you've never even given me like a small goat. Um, but you cut up like the fattened calf for this guy. He went and did all this stuff to your land and your money. He sold half the land. Like, what's up with that, Dad? And the Dad says, look, everything that's left is yours. Everything that's left is yours. My son, he was dead. But now he's alive. He was lost, now he's found. See, God doesn't play favorites between you, or you, sorry, or me, or my wife, my daughter. God doesn't play favorites with his children. It's just a matter of, you know, this child has been with me the whole time and he's gotten all my love. This one left and there's a special type of love when that child finally comes back home. It's a special, different kind. Not that it's any stronger or any lesser. It's a different kind. It's a different thing to rejoice. Right? When it, especially when he talks about the 99, you know, the one sheep that goes missing. You know, God leaves the 99 to go find that one. Right? Um, so, yeah... I got that verse in my head and I was so glad to 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 talk about it. I mean th
the amazingness of God and what He revealed to me to just today, just saying that about that you are called to be a child, not a servant. That was such a, a blessing. And I want to read this next part. And again, that first part that was that was for someone that maybe lost or lost their way. This part's for everyone that didn't. Right? That's for the one. This part's for the ninety-nine. And why we shouldn't be jealous of the one, right? And if you're following along in your Bible, go to Matthew chapter 28. And we're going to literally read like the last two or three verses of Matthew. And it says right here, it says, um, Then Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the ends of the, of the age. What I just read, read is what we call the Great Commission. The Great Commission, right? It, it's kind of an interesting word today because we don't really use that word very much, but like um, if a city wanted a sculpture or like a, a painting or something they would say that they commissioned an artist to make right like kind of told an artist this is what you are told to do this is your job this is your appointment it's the it's the great appointment right? the great job that is to spread the word of God to all of the ends of the earth to anywhere to everywhere and to everyone God has called you to be a fisher of men. I know I just talked about called you to be a child, but this is the work in the house that you were called to do. And that's not to uh, belittle your, your specific calling in life, right? Like, my calling is to be a pastor. But first and foremost, it's to be a fisher of men. All of the callings after that fall under that and are connected to that. All right, so what, what does that mean? What, what did it mean when Jesus called us to do that? Called his disciples to do that? Just when he told them that, I will make you fishers of men. He called you to bring people to Christ, to spread the gospel to people. And I challenge you, I ask you, have you been doing that right like obviously we can't go like door to door right now that'd be pretty bad probably end up going to jail I've seen a few posts about people going to the parks and stuff and not ending up well so maybe not door to door right but what about social media you know what about online what about if you're one of the essential workers at work you know, do, do your employees, do your co-workers, does your boss know that you're a Christian? Can they see it? Have you told them anything about God? Maybe you haven't told them, but can they see God in you? Right? The Bible tells us that a city on a hill can't be hidden. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Right? Like, you, you, you can't hide Lake Hills at night. You can't. Everyone's got their porch lights on, right? Um, and it says you, you don't light a candle just to hide it. Right? You, you don't light a candle and then put it under a basket or something to be hidden. You, you put it in the middle of the room. I had this in the middle of the table, kind of out of frame. But you put it in the middle of the room so it can give light to everyone and to the whole house. There is a candle that has been lit inside of you that that light that's burning inside of you right we all know the the um, the little like the song you know this little light I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it shine right we all know it but are you letting it shine is the is that burning inside of you giving light to everyone around you and it's easy sometimes to admit that 
well, it's kind of difficult sometimes to actually admit that sometimes no. Right? Sometimes we're off our A game. Sometimes we're just not feeling it. Sometimes it's difficult to talk to that person, that that person, because you know that that person's not gonna listen. You are called above that, right? I said yesterday. I read yesterday. You are more than a conqueror, brothers and sisters. You are more than a conqueror. There is nothing for you to be afraid of. Nothing for you to be afraid of. Be that light. Be that salt of the earth. You know, it, it's not easy being a Christian. It, it isn't. You know, Christ says that in order to be a follower of Him, you have to pick up your cross on a daily basis and follow Him. You have to be willing to give up everything in order to follow Him. It's not easy. As a Christian, a lot of times, especially in today's times, we're mocked. You're mocked for being a Christian. You're mocked for believing in a God. You know, a lot of people, it's a different type of persecution than other places like in the Middle East where you know, you're killed for being a Christian. Um, it's a different type of persecution. It's more of a social persecution here. Right? You're thought of as, as a dumb right-wing voter. But you are so much more than that. You are a child of God. I remember yesterday, if God is for you, who can be against you? I want to encourage you today to take the next chance that you have to tell someone or show someone about Jesus. Everything that I've said tonight to you means absolutely nothing. If you do not take this, and run with it. If you do not take this and use it immediately. Because as soon as I click off of live, and as soon as this is done, if you don't immediately do something about it, if you don't immediately tell someone that Jesus loves them, something as simple as that, or telling, I'm, hey, I'm there for you, I love you, then believe me, as soon as you start scrolling down Facebook, something's going to come up. Something's going to anger you. Something's going to take that spirit away from you. It's so easy for us. We can be at church and listen to pastors say the, the perfect sermon. God literally speaking to your soul. And if we don't immediately do something with it, we could be at the end of the driveway of the church and then just lose it. The enemy will immediately attack you. Right? If you're in church or you're watching, even if you're watching this live stream right now, I bet you that there's someone, there's someone that's going to get a text that just is just going to throw them off. I, I guarantee you someone watching this video is a, getting a text right now that's going to throw them off this video. Because it happens to me even sometimes, especially when my work texts me. That immediately throws me. Right? It's so important that when you hear the word, you do the word. I want to challenge you two things. If you feel like this message touched and you feel like you've moved away from God and you want to come back, you want God to meet you where you are, then we're going to say a prayer. I want you to say that prayer with me. I want you to tell us that you said that prayer so that way we can get in contact with you and help you out, send you a Bible, do something for you. Second thing I want, the other thing is that if that part's not for you, then I want you to take this sermon, take this Bible study, and use it immediately. I'm not saying to share the video so a bunch of people see me. That's, I don't care. Tell someone that Jesus loves them. That they are called to be a child of God. And that he did not ask them to be a slave but a child of God. Something as simple as that. Something as gracious as that. If you want to share this video and share it to as many people as possible, so as many people that need to hear this word can, then I encourage you to do that. But I'm going to take this moment to say a prayer with you.
if you feel like you need to say, if you feel like you need to turn to God or turn back to God. The world is not helping you. The world is not giving you the life that you thought it was. It was fun at first. It always is. Sin is always fun at first. Otherwise, you wouldn't do it. But you realize that God is so much more. There is so much more life and happiness when you have God with you. I mean that on such a deep level. Like I have been very scared about not having gas money to make it to church when I was living on base in Oceanside. Or I had to get food from the food bank. Otherwise, my family couldn't eat. I've been there before. I have been there before. It is Just because you're a Christian, just because you're a pastor, doesn't mean that you are safe from all the hurt and pain. Not at all. In fact, you get hit a lot harder. But what makes it more joyful is the fact that you know that God has it in his hands, that he's in control. It makes your stress level so much crazy different, so much crazy low when you realize that you don't have to worry about it because God has already designed it. He is the winner of the battle, all right? So again, just because you become a Christian doesn't mean your life is gonna become super easy. You're gonna have a bunch of cash, right? You say this prayer, you share this post, you're gonna get a check in the mail. I mean, you might from the government, I don't know. But if you haven't gotten it yet, but that's not what I'm telling you. That's not what I'm telling you. What I'm telling you is that you're gonna find peace. You're gonna be able to handle those different those situations without alcohol, without drugs, without a prostitute, without a, your girlfriend, without any of them. You're gonna be able to handle that with Christ on your side. So if you want that, if you want to come to Christ, I encourage you to say this prayer with me. Lord God, I thank you for your blessings. I I'm so sorry that I've sinned against you. I pray that you come into my life and that you change my life. I know that you are coming after me. I know that I am lost and that you are trying to find me. God, here I am with open arms, ready to receive you. Change my life, make me new. Help me, God. I want to be your child. In your mighty name I say, amen. Again, if you just now said that prayer with me, then please tell us. Message us on Facebook. Go to our website, www.lhccr.com. And it's that first little tab that says, I'm new. If you click on that, or it says, I'm new or connect card. I know the actual thing itself says connect card. I can't remember what the website says. I should probably know because I designed the website. But <laughs> but you click on that and there's you fill out the little card. It's super basic information. There's a little tab, a little button on there that you press and you say, I said a prayer. And then you just click that tab. And you let us know and then we can get in contact with you. I want to send you a Bible. Okay? Um, I don't care how many I get. <laughs> I'll, I'll mail them. I'll pay for it. But I want to ma mail you a little Bible, and I want to help you through this journey that you're about to partake on, that you are partaking on. Shandell, can you come over? So I'm going to close out in prayer. And uh, again, I don't see anyone put up uh, any prayer requests. So last chance, if you have a prayer request, you have anything that you'd like us to pray about, please make sure that you put it in the comment section really, really, really quickly. If not, then we'll just pray over everyone that's watching real quick. So, let's go ahead and close out in prayer. While I'm praying, I'll kind of peek out and kind of listen to some babe. Once my wife is behind the camera right now, by the way. But uh, once I'm done praying, I'll say goodbye. You can just end the video, okay? All right. So again, last chance. If you have anything that you want me to pray about, all of us to pray about together, let me know. And if you don't make the cut, don't worry about it. Still put it in the comment section. Message us if you want it to be a little more private. And we'll, I want to pray for you. I'm super bored. Like, like I've put in plants around the house. My wife is getting really mad because I keep going to Home Depot to get more and more stuff for the backyard. So keep me busy on my prayer strings, okay? Please. <laughs> my wife will thank you, I promise you. Um, 
but we'll go ahead and close this out in prayer, okay? Lord God, I want to thank you for all the blessings that you have given us tonight. I want to thank you for the word that you have given us, this Bible study that you have given us. I want to thank you for the chance to be able to see these people, for these people to be able to listen to you over the internet. It's so amazing what you have done in the times, Father God. That even though we cannot be in the church, we understand that we are the church. It doesn't matter where we are, we are the church. And we don't have to be in the same room, we don't have to be in the same building to be two or more gathered we can be on the internet we can be live we can be on the phone we can just pray at the same time and as long as we're in unity god I'll, you will bless us you will listen to us i want to thank you god i want to thank you god i want to pray right now for the church that you continue to bless the church all the churches around father god but i want to pray that you continue to bless our food bank and that we can keep it open father god I want to pray for the people that are watching this right now, live, not live. I want to pray for the people that aren't watching, everyone. I just want to pray, God. I pray, Father, that you touch their lives. I pray that whatever is coming against them, that you would come against them even harder. I pray for the person that has lost their job because of this pandemic. I pray that they would find a job fast. I pray, Father God, that they would not lose their home, they would not lose their apartment, Father, but that they would thrive. I want to pray, Father God, for the family that's splitting apart right now, that you would bless them, that you would bring them together, that you would be the glue to hold them together, Father. I want to pray, Father, for our city, for our state, for our country, and for this world, that we would all come back to you, Father, that you would show us your light, that you would show us the path, that you would show us the way. I pray that this world would turn their eyes back to you God the way it was I pray for our leadership God the government leadership whether we like them or we hate them whoever they are left right in the middle up down whatever I pray that you would bless them with health I pray that you would bless them with life and I pray that you would bless them with knowledge God that you would bless their hearts and their souls Father that they could grow and that they would see you God and that you would guide them Father just like you do with us, just like you do in our lives, Lord God. I want to thank you for everyone that watched, Lord. I want to pray for Rebecca and Brandon and David and Foley, Gina, Eva, Esther. Um, Gina messaged a few times. And Lori Riggs, but Mom. I want to pray that you bless them, Father God. I want to pray, Lord, that, that what was said today would penetrate their hearts. I pray that they would do something about what they heard, Father that they would act on. In my name, we praise you and we thank you, Father. Amen. Once again, if... Did you pause it? Okay. <laughs> Touch the screen. Once again, I wanted to tell you that if this message has touched you in any way, let us know. And if you think that this message is for someone, act on it. Act on what you feel and tell someone about Jesus immediately. That is the Great Commission. That is what you were called to do, is spread the gospel. And people need the gospel today. They need the gospel tonight. Tonight, they need to hear about God. There is someone that is thinking about taking their life tonight. And they need you, they need someone, excuse me, to tell them that Jesus loves them. That they were called a child. That they are worth so much more than what they think. I want you to take this chance right now, right after this, to tell someone that you think needs to hear it, that you know needs to hear it, that Jesus loves them. And I want to tell you that you are called to be so much more. You are a conqueror in Jesus' name, through Jesus' name. You are a child of God, and God is chasing after you. He's going to meet you where you are. He's going to walk you back to the house. Thank you guys for watching. God bless you. I hope that this message touched you. Make sure that you follow us on Facebook. Follow us on YouTube. I'm going to upload this to YouTube here in a little bit. Um, but uh, make sure that you just check in with us. We update stuff all the time. We have posts coming out every single day to keep you guys entertained. Um, but to make sure that you guys get the word uh, as often as possible. Okay, guys? I love you. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Take care.
How do you end it? There's a button that says finish. I don't see it. <laughs> Alright guys. I gotta find the finish button. Love you guys. <laughs> it's off to the side. Where's it at? She is right. It is gone.